What's going on YouTube? Season four is almost over, so I figured now would be a good time to drop an updated tips and tricks video to help people make it to Crimson or Iridescent. I'm not going to go over the obvious tips that you've already heard from other YouTubers, so if you're here looking for the basics on strategy and stacking, you're gonna have to click off to another video. This video is for the players that have received a thorough spanking by the SPMF gods and have been essentially hard stuck in Diamond and Platinum. So without wasting any more time, let's get straight into the video. Tip numero uno is the ultimate cheese trick, and I'm not surprised if it ends up getting patched in the upcoming season, but you can back out of lobbies and check a list of players in the lobby before you enter the match. To check who's in your lobby, as soon as you see that the lobby is connected and there are players filtering in, all you need to do is hit the menu button, right center button on Xbox, and the R3 button, which is the right stick, and you should see a list of players in your lobby. You can then scroll through and check everyone's rank, but sometimes you may get the bronze button where everyone's rank will just be bronze. To get past this bug, just exit out of the list and look at it again. This issue is normally caused because the ranks of the other players are still loading in game, so leaving and checking the list will just be a quick fix for this issue. Now to learn how to back out of lobbies. You'll want to hit the menu button again on Xbox, but hit RB this time to go to the headphone tab. You'll then want to hit A on the party button and then RB twice again to get to the settings tab. From there, you just hit the leave party button when you want to exit the lobby and you can start your search again from there. To really make good use of these two tricks, what I recommend for teams to do is to have two people check the lobby. One person starting from the top of the list and another starting from the bottom, while the host of the team is on standby so they can immediately leave as soon as the people checking call out an eerie, crim, top 250, or hackers that they don't really want to play with. Is this tip completely overpowered? Yes, but it is also completely necessary in the current state of Warzone. There are hundreds of hackers in the Erie and top 250 skill divisions right now that are just running rampant. Save yourself the heartbreak of losing all your SR to this BS and just back out of the lobby. Alternatively, if you want to test what your team is made of and find the top players to play with, this is also another great method to check and confirm a sweat of your lobby to each their own. Tip number two is to prioritize finding easier lobbies through Discord groups. By now, there are multiple YouTube channels that offer booking for groups so people can find other players to grind with. Now, these Discord chats have been a great way for players to meet new people, but I think it should be said that it's not wise to join a random LFG just because you need teammates. Yes, having someone with a mic is great and all, but what happens if that new player you just joined is totally toxic or has a complete different playstyle from you? You don't want to be arguing in the middle of a match about strategy and play styles. Instead, hop into a warm-up game with your new teammates and see how you vibe. I like to run trio squads with a new team to see how we do when we're at a disadvantage. If you guys make it okay, then most likely you have a solid team. Otherwise, keep looking. Not everyone is going to mesh with your playstyle. Diving deeper into finding players in Discord groups, it's important to build a team that will provide you the best chance of getting easier lobbies. To do this, we need to understand how ranked lobbies are created in the first place. You've all probably already seen this SR party restrictions graphic. For some reason, Diamond players get the unfortunate ability to be stuck in lobbies with only Cram series and the top 250s, despite being able to play with plats and golds. If you want to avoid these ultra sweat lobbies, I would recommend building a team of two Diamond players and one gold player. These lobbies are usually much more manageable, and if your gold player is a strong anchor and your Diamond players are demon sweats, the two Diamond players can just tag team the whole lobby while the gold player's main job is to just get buybacks and staying alive. These easier lobbies will also usually keep coming until your gold teammate is almost diamond. So from my experience, I found this to be the fastest way for players to get over that diamond hump and into Crimson. Okay, so I know these past two tricks haven't even been in-game tips, but I promise that the next three will be more tangible game advice. Please also help a brother out and drop a like or sub to the channel. I work a 9 to 5, so you know these tips are coming straight from your favorite gaming uncle. Tip number three is abusing buy stations in the right POIs. The buy stations are literally a pay to win mechanism in the game and people just aren't using them properly enough. If you clear out any POI late game in a ranked match, you know that as long as you hold that spot, you're going to win the game. That becomes even easier when you have access to all the equipment, kill streaks, and buybacks right in front of you. With the guaranteed fire sale in zone three of every ranked match, Having a buy station in the right part of the map can also set you up for the perfect regain if your team is in a bad position. In my experience, the top five places to throw down a portable buy station is prison roof, control center roof, chem roof on the latter side, bio roof, factory roof behind the staircase, and stronghold tower. 
I can't even count how many games I've won simply because my team was able to just buy everything outright while our enemies were struggling making unnecessary gas plays for the nearest buy station only for it to close down because it was in the gas and not in the right spot. They also double as easy headies to pick off opponents in open fields, so don't feel shy to throw them out during open end zone areas. Tip four kind of relies on tip three, but it is to buy every goddamn funky buster you can. These are currently the most broken kill streaks in Warzone since they can go through walls and are perfect for clearing shacks or even entire buildings late in the end game. The initial hit from the missile is usually enough to break all armor off a player or even down them, but a secondary benefit of this kill streak is the annoying circle of gas that lingers. That gas actually burns up ticks on the gas masks, so it helps prevent players with durables from making extended gas plays if they get smacked by one of them. I haven't tested this, but I think there's a smaller cooldown limit for bunker busters, so there's been situations where I've seen a full team use three bunker busters to clear out a house at the same time by spamming them one after another. And the final tip I have for you all is to call out where you want to land when you respawn and always recentering your team for the end zone. Don't just randomly drop back into the war zone, especially where you just died. Ask your teammates if it's safe or if you need to pick a spot to regain. If there are two of your teammates floating in the sky, send one first to a POI to check if it's safe and then take turns finding a good place to regain. While doing this, you should keep in mind that there's normally a 50-50% chance that the center of the circle is also safe to land because all the other teams are too busy killing each other. Those are the best situations for a team to regain because you can just focus on dropping in unnoticed and defending the best position in the game versus constantly hunting people down for kills. That's why it's crucial that when you pop UAVs, you look at the full map and for the gaps in between red dots to find maneuverable spots in the map. I'm going to break down this next part of the match to show you how my team turned a blender of a game into a super clutch dub by recentering. Yeah, so as you can see, I went straight for the middle of the map onto Big Green I'm on the roof. I'm on the roof. and regrouped with my teammates. We have for and we knew immediately we had to go buy a loadout, so that's the next thing we did. Pulled a cash, yeah, I'll take the, and I'll take the money. we went and got loadout. I threw it out back. Loadout drop headed your way. And so once we got loadout, we knew we could just defend at this position because we hadn't been shot at for at least a minute. And since resupply hit, we just oh, kept here. looting Fuck until the beginning of the end zones. I'm gonna attempt to rest. I'll take it. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Okay, okay. Got people on you? No, 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 we're, we're just grouped no, up. No, 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 <sighs> We hold, we hold anybody coming down from headquarters. Yeah. On me, on me, on me, on me, on me, close, close, close. Come, 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 come to us. Weak, 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 too weak. They're getting fucked up by boat or something. Coming out now. They suck. They Goodbye. Suck. Goodbye. So I mean that right there was a super easy fight. These guys had everything they needed and they just walked straight into us because we were already there first. The enemy is no longer tracking you. You lost them. I didn't grab uh, that broke. muni. You got the muni or no? But yeah, I got the muni. Drop it in. I don't see where he drops. Enemy soldier incoming. You have the PDS. They're out there. They're out there still. They're out yeah. there already. Wow. We need a airstrike. I have an airstrike. And here's the Bunky Buster. Perfectly timed. You know, we need to move. So this is giving us great cover. No, no. Oh, they're on the roof. On the roof. And you'll see here, this is where I almost get screwed over. That team that just knocked my teammate had yeah, a buy station right in front of them. I, I have, I and I'm like, oh, that's fine. You know, I have a buy station to my left. There's gas. No. I can definitely get to it. Well, of course this guy knows! <laughs> Famous last words. No, dude. Go, 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 go. I'm gonna die. But here's where I get super lucky. I find a PRD on the floor. And it totally says my ass. Oh, he made it. <laughs> he beamed me out of the sky, dude. 
Wait, I'm safe inside. I'm safe inside. I'm in grandma's. Oh my god, I'm alive! The res first. I should get the other res first. Throw the mortar down right away. Facts, 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 facts. We can buy. We can buy. We can buy. Yo, you have plates? You got a precision too. You can throw down. Oh. Oh. Both are not uh, one's right outside coming in now. Of course I'm getting. I downed one. I downed one. Uh, I just, this guy's on the roof, bro. Just sat through the whole precision, bro. Like what? One v three. One v two. They're on me. They're playing zone. Shit. I'm clear for a rest. There's a bunch of loot up here. I'm about to die. I mortared it. I mortared it. If you just float, you can land on him. I broke one. I broke one. I broke one. I downed one. I downed one. I don't know where, but. Nope, I'm down. Oh, let's go! Let's fucking go! Holy shit! <laughs> okay, I can admit that last part was crazy lucky, but we were cooked earlier on, so you can see how that recentering at Big Green kind of changed the out for our team. That's you. Needed a mortar to work, huh? Yeah. And there you have it. If you guys implement all these tips in your next couple of matches, I guarantee you you'll be crimson or eerie in no time. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and good luck out there before the end of the season. Adios. See you all in the next one.